brash blend of lightning quick platforming, fast and frantic combat and a peculiar card based resource system, Neon White is a slick and special speed running FPS that's simple to understand but hard to put down. Think Doom Eternal's platforming sections only replace the grim hellscapes with the floating architecture of an abstract heaven and you're part of the way there. Add a little of Trials HD trying to ride the perfect route over the corpse of Mirror's Edge and you'll be even closer. With its precise and elegant controls and its uncanny ability to make even an average shooter player feel lithe and lethal, it's extremely easy to get lured into Neon White's loop, even if the story stitching it all together immediately overstays its welcome. Neon White's oddball premise, which sees sinners plucked from purgatory to serve as parkour pest exterminators, clearing out a demon infestation in heaven as part of an annual contest where the winner gets to remain there, certainly sounds interesting on paper. In practice, however, it makes a large portion of Neon White a young adult visual novel, where a bunch of brightly coloured dead millennials reminisce about their past lives and argue a bunch. If you'd prefer the flames of hell for eternity to a year of heavenly delights, be my guest. I do appreciate the effort to slow down and add context to the 12 chapters and 97 levels developer Angel Matrix has built here, rather than just machine gunning them directly into our veins non-stop that is, but overall Neon White's slightly over-assertive blend of pop-punk Christianity and off-brand anime didn't grab me. You can fast forward through it, but it's always there. Just wanted to say, good work taking out those demons. This makes for a lot of chat to wade through outside of the otherwise impeccable puzzle platforming, delivered by a cast of goths, gym bros, and cloud riding capsule toys that are as irritating as they are horny. There's the titular White, a spindly legged man who wears three belts, none of which appear connected to his trousers, and who likes to stand with his shoulders pulled back and his crotch thrust forward. Then there's Violet, a knife wielding pixie with an infantilized voice that had opened a remote garage door, and who seems like the kind of woman who'd dot the eyes on her ransom letters with love hearts. Too bad he's dead now, mauled by a demon on day one, <laughs> like some kind of noob. There's also a cigar chomping cat, a BDSM redhead in a giant collar, and a spiky haired meathead. It's like the first page of a DeviantArt search up in here. I mean, if that's what you need to compare it to. If this is exactly what you're after, you're in luck. For me, I honestly can't tell whether the dialogue is deliberately bad or accidentally bad, but I guess it's probably immaterial because there's no real difference in the end result. Damn, I'm really working up a sweat. You're so lucky you don't have big boobs, White. They get it the worst. Uh, you think I don't have things that sweat? Despite the fact there are vast slabs of this visual novel regularly wedged throughout Neon White, it's a testament to the quality of the action itself that it's well worth enduring. Inside the levels themselves, Neon White takes on a completely separate identity, where the hokiness is elbowed aside for some absolutely razor-sharp FPS action. The objective? Kill all enemies and reach the exit as quickly as possible. The catch? Each level is a parkour puzzle, and reaching the end within the allotted time limits requires judicious juggling of the finite weapon and ability cards. Why are they cards? Other than allowing White to briefly look like an edgy street magician in the intro movie, I don't know, but it works. Each card grants White the limited use of a weapon alongside the use of a one-time secondary ability. The pistol turns into a double jump, the rifle a high-speed dash, and the machine gun a destructive grenade that doubles as a vertical boost. Shotguns turn White into a sailing fireball, rocket launchers become grappling hooks, and SMGs become devastating ground pounds. Using an ability to clear a gap, breach an obstacle, or destroy an enemy burns the card that granted it, but there's always another. The beauty of Neon White is that the precise assortment of cards you'll need to nail a level is always there, it's just up to you to gather and execute them all in the perfect spots. This ended up being a lot less intimidating than I'd feared, as there's a very well-considered visual language at work within Neon White. 
With sharp and simple graphics and very deliberate use of color, Neon White usually makes it quite clear which direction you need to travel, the barriers you can smash, and the gaps you need to leap. It's remarkably intuitive, seeping its way into my brain before I'd even realized it. There were definitely instances where I'd find myself jumping into a void during a first run through a level and dying without a clear idea of where I was supposed to be headed, but these were exceptions. As a result, Neon White boasts not only a marvelous sense of momentum, but also a fantastic ability to flatter you. There were certainly many occasions during Neon White where I felt like the greatest dead parkour assassin in the universe. Breathless moments where I'd reached the end of a level and picked up my trophy by bounding and blasting by the seat of my pants and watching the footage back felt like watching someone else playing. Someone much better than me. For an entirely unexceptional shooter player, Neon White's capacity to make you feel like you look good playing it is a real credit. Better still, the faster you go, the more it encourages you to keep improving. First by giving you your own ghost to chase, and next by revealing new shortcuts to you. After mastering the moves, I found myself searching for other hidden jumps and bits of level geometry that could be scaled or exploited. It hooks you into its just one more try loop. Levels can take between 10 to 20 seconds to a few minutes, although the sweet spot seems to be around a minute or less. The longer levels and boss battles towards Neon White's end do introduce a potent new card and some new traversal techniques, but I found these pretty tiresome on account of their punishing lengths. With no mid-level checkpoints by design and extremely limited health, the longer levels are honestly just more frustrating than fun. Neon White is a quick and compulsive first-person platformer that's surprisingly simple to understand and play, but packs a very stern speedrunning challenge at its core. Tying your combat options to your traversal mechanics, Neon White makes every encounter a deadly parkour puzzle that can be replayed over and over in search of the perfect run and the tightest time. The dialogue between its unlikable troop of angst-ridden anime-inspired assassins may be a hokey misstep, but its airtight level design and fantastic sense of momentum ensure Neon White's gameplay is something to celebrate. For more Neon White, check out our devs react to a blistering 35 minute speed run, and if speed really is your thing, check out our verdict on F122. For everything else, stay on IGN.